The morning sunrise on the day before the race offers a hint of the storm that is to come. But for now, there is a feeling of calm and reassurance in the Level 5 camp. We're very happy. I mean, we looked at our plan and we're actually ahead of where we wanted to be, even with the accident. So the accident's completely erased. We're ahead of schedule and we're, we're running better and more competitively than we really anticipated, even with the setback on the accident. So we're pretty, we're pretty excited. Both cars skip the morning practice as planned, so their engines can be replaced. The new BMW engines are identical replications of the ones used in Thursday's practice, except Steve Dynan has made several adjustments in an ongoing effort to increase performance. Well, I can't tell you exact details, because <laughs> that's top secret. But um, there's some, so some minor upgrades to the engine uh, for the race, which actually should improve both reliability and power. These are the men who will undoubtedly push Steve Dynan's engines to their limits. These are men who refuse to acknowledge the word defeat in any language. The one thing you'll see across the board is unbelievable competitiveness. Hate to lose. And, and carry to the extreme. You know, it's whose rental car is faster. They go for ice cream at the end of the day. It's whose ice cream cone is slightly bigger than the next guy's. I mean, it is, it is that competitiveness to the nth degree that all champions have, I think. And that's what these guys have. Now they have to temper that. They have to act like that's not the way they really feel. But deep down inside, when it really comes out, that's the way they feel. They want to win. They want to be the fastest. You put three drivers in a car at Daytona through a rotation, and they'll stand there. You didn't see them reading a book, but I guarantee you they were standing there watching that monitor, seeing if the, their co-driver was a tenth quicker than them. That's what, that's what sets the really good ones apart from the guys that just do it average. With less than 30 hours to go before the race, it's time to smile big and meet the press. In the front row, in the far end, Ryan Hunter Ray, Christophe Fouchou, Scott Tucker, Sebastian Bourdais. In the back row, Richard Westbrook, Lucas Lohr, Sasha Mawson, Emmanuel Collard. First, let's uh, hear from you, Ryan Hunter Ray. It's a great way to start the year. I'm really excited to be here. It's definitely an interesting race. You know, it's just so exciting to be here with these guys. It's really nice to be back. Really excited. We have a really strong team. The team is good. We've got a great team. It's a great team, great lineup. The quality of the team. We have a good lineup, good guys. We have eight good drivers. That's a great point. Good drivers. And the quality of the drivers. Package is good. A good package. Competitive uh, package. I think everything should be good. Everything is good. We are really strong and really competitive. The guys are working hard. The competition will be really tight here and the competition it's always really tight i think everybody here would agree with that we're working real hard we're hoping to uh, uh you know really uh you know go for a nice result here i'd have to say we've got a really good chance hopefully we can uh, put it all together we hope to 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 win this race we've got the experience to do it you just need a little bit of luck and then you're there i'm really uh hoping for a bit better luck a little bit of luck we just need to just need to go about it and uh calm manner and be there in the end we need to be there at the end being there at the end and i will do all my best to to visit the victory lane when a reporter asks how the drivers managed to share the track with slower gt cars scott tucker lightens the mood okay uh, i'll let lucas take the lead on that <laughs> i knew this was coming uh, <laughs> No, normally, I mean, it's not a big deal, but in my case, I mean, if you get hit in the back, there's nothing what you can do about it. And you were uh, too slow then if you get hit in yeah. the back. And um, no, it's just some guys, they have uh, a lot to do with themselves, and uh, sometimes I have the feeling they are a little bit lost, but it is like this. It's for everybody the same. You have to deal with it, and... Uh, we had our come together already, so it won't happen again in the race, and that's good like this. The final practice is uneventful, which is good news for Level 5. We got all the drivers rotated through the cars. Uh, we got the radios working. Uh, all the little minor details that no one really thinks about besides just going fast. So, uh, you know, uh, right now we stand uh, prepared and ready to go. To be honest, we're about where we where we deserve to be when you're racing against the likes of Gainsco and Ganassi that have been thrashing this championship for, for a long time. You know, you can't underestimate those guys. They do a lot of hard work and they're some pretty, pretty bright guys and they do their development and the drivers know the cars and they know each other and the mechanics know the cars and they know each other and, and so it goes on. 
and it, it very much is a team effort and we're, we're still bonding as a team and it, and it feels like that to be honest I have some some reservations in my gut from a lifetime experience that I wish I didn't have today uh, going into this race maybe I'll feel a little bit better tomorrow but until Sunday afternoon nobody will really know what the situation is but uh, but I would say we have I'd like to think we have as good a chance as anybody this year at a win it's uh, the morning of the race uh... Looks like the weather's going to be a little cloudy this morning. Uh, they say that uh, you know it might it might be raining at the start. Our goal is you know first you've got to finish the race. So uh, what we'd like to see is both the cars running reasonably well around noon tomorrow. Uh, that gives us about a three-hour uh, window to really see where the race is, and you know that's when, really when our strategy kicks in. This race is like any of these long endurance races; it's a crapshoot. Uh, you really don't know, but all in all, it uh, looks like uh, we're uh, you know we're positioned for a good result. The autograph session gives thousands of fans a chance to interact with some of the biggest names in auto racing. Because the Rolex 24 is held when other leagues are in their off-season, stars from Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR have the opportunity to put their reputations on the line at Daytona. Juan Pablo Montoya, a winner in Formula One, CART, IndyCar, and NASCAR, has won the Rolex 24 twice. He's back for the 2010 event, again driving for Chip Ganassi Racing. Four-time NASCAR Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson will drive for the Gaines Co. Bob Stallings team. His teammates include two-time Rolex Series champions Alex Gurney and John Fogarty. And the DP field features several past IndyCar champions, including Dario Franchitti and Jimmy Vassar. You're definitely competing against the best in the world. And... You know, you're so focused on just your own driving, uh, it, you know, to take a step back and then realize who you're racing against, it would be uh, probably a little intimidating. After two decades of hard-earned success, Christophe Bougieu knows every race presents an opportunity for greatness and an equal chance for disaster. It's something uh, where you have to build step by step, and more you are going, you are climbing high, and more it's easy to go down, you know? And each time you have to show all the time what you are able to do. It, even if you are three-time world champion, and even like me, you won uh, the most prestigious 24 hours rest of, uh, in the world, like Le Mans, Daytona, and Spa, it uh, doesn't matter. You can, uh, you can burn everything in, uh, in less than two, two days. One hour before the scheduled start, the heavens open. I don't know that it really changes the strategy of the race other than being extra careful out there, uh, staying out of trouble, because there'll be cars going off and, and, and going off the track and dragging you know, dirt and mud and debris back onto the track. So the main thing is just caution, extra care. We're trying to keep the inside of the car as dry as we can. With these closed cars, they steam up pretty quick in there. Uh, luckily, we got just before uh, race week here, we got uh, delivery of two brand new heated screens from Europe, which hopefully will be the, the, the key that we need to keep uh, clear vision for the driver. I consider what when we when we go onto the racetrack to be almost war. That uh, I want to win more than they want to win. I want to do it in a way that that, that justifies uh, going about it the way that I go about it. And, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, if I don't do my job well enough, we're not going to win the race. As a race engineer, most people would think I'm the, the challenge would be making the car fast and, and making it uh, last and things like that. Daytona is much more than that. It's almost a management, it's a technical management position where you know you're going to have problems, so your crew has to be prepared. And it's not simple things like you're out of gas, but gas in it. There are things like you have brake changes to deal with. When are you going to make a brake change? You don't want to do that under green, you want to do it under yellow. 
So it becomes a big management task. You cannot have one thing wrong and you have to be precise for 24 hours. A Dynan BMW has never won this event, but this could be the year. Five of the 15 Daytona prototypes in one GT car are racing with Steve Dynan's engines. After 364 days of preparation, most of David Stone's work is done before the race begins. His team's fate now rests in the hands, feet, and split-second reactions of eight drivers who are about to face the unpredictable. Now the green is out, but also the double yellow. So the race and the clock has officially started. The 2010 Rolex 24 at Daytona is underway. However, we are behind the Mazda pace car. The race proceeds under the yellow caution flag for 19 minutes due to the persistent and heavy rain. They've done five laps under caution. Finally, we see green flag waving here. We're under racing for real now in the 2010 Rolex 24 at Daytona. Christoph Bouchou wastes little time. Oh, is there a fight going on? Let me have a part of this, says Christoph Fouchou. Look at the black car there, the 55. He's won this race overall before, and the Frenchman really wants to get back up on top this year. On lap 12, Christoph Bouchou moves into third place. And on lap 15, he takes second. I'll tell you, a man who's on a mission right now is Christophe Bouchou. He is currently up to second in the 55 car there, so he is chasing down Mamo Gidley. Just a half hour into this maddening marathon, Christophe Bouchou can almost smell the victory. The question is, can he see it? Surprisingly, looking right there on Christophe Bouchou, you can see the windscreen only wiper only goes on the driver's side. Look, it just hung up there. That's something that happens a lot, too. As his visibility deteriorates, so does his ability to communicate. Christophe Bouchou and engineer Graham Taylor must now contend with a radio problem that seems to be worsening by the minute. As cars spin off the track around him, Scott Tucker shepherds the 95 car from 13th to 11th position. Doing great, guys. Doing exactly what you need to do. Just staying in contact. Keep it up. Doing great. Doing great. Slow cars up in front of you. Pay attention. Do your time. This will probably bring out a four-course caution because that car is not going to be able to go it any further than right where it is right now. Both Level 5 engineers take advantage of the yellow with unscheduled pit stops on lap 19. You're getting out. Great job. Great job. Ryan Hunter Ray takes over for team owner Scott Tucker in the 95. Watch Jimmy, watch Jimmy. Go, go, go. Go, go. The pit stop is a rough one for Tucker. After practicing driver changes with the 55 team all week, he was unprepared for the methods employed by the 95's crew. The 55's first pit stop takes longer than desired and the car drops five positions from second to seventh while in the pits. Communication remains a problem. But Christoph Fouchou doesn't need a radio to pass slower drivers. This is Christoph Fouchou. Inside move there. So grabs another position. Not a problem. Whoa. Had a little uh, close call right there as he dropped the left side wheel tire into the dirt. There was a driver change executed in the 95. Scott Tucker, team principal, stepping out. Ryan Hunter Ray, IndyCar star, stepping in. You heard Ryan say to Kelly Lil earlier, I just want to get in there and start carving him up. And that's exactly what he's doing. Weather uh, conditions were pretty treacherous. Uh, we made it through that. Uh, we picked up three or four spots and handed the car over to Ryan, so we're in good shape. I think both cars are sitting in the top six right now. Scott Tucker has done precisely what was asked of him. Stay out of trouble and hand off the baton without dropping it. Watch for those 
level five, the two black BMW powered Rileys. Huge investment from Scott Tucker and his group. It's run by David Stone and the gang up there in Madison, Wisconsin. And it is a first class operation with a first class driver lineup. Those two black BMWs will be contenders. It's so hard, though, to expand to a two-car operation, Dorsey, for this event. There are so many people underneath that awning in trying to get those guys to gel and get the chemistry so that when things go wrong, they work together as a unit. And on top of that, Scott hired the best of the best as far as drivers, and it's sometimes hard to keep those guys' egos in check. They all are used to winning overall, so they, it might sometimes be uh, not a good idea. It's Christophe Boucher there. In that black level five motorsport car taking the long way around the outside, oh. really tight again. Despite the challenging conditions, Christophe Bouchou continues to advance and flirt with danger. That's pretty wild stuff there from Christophe Bouchou, just trying to hang on as he went off the edge of the track. He's right alongside Ricardo Zonda, it's an outside move. Does this pay off, or is he carrying oh, too much speed? Too good, much. Good save. He got stuck on the outside. If a race driver wasn't willing to take risks, he wouldn't be a race driver. But in the early stages of a rain-soaked endurance event, some risks aren't worth taking. I'd say there's not much grip right there, Calvin. Yeah, he was very wide once again. We saw him the previous lap. He ran really wide up and over that curbing. And uh, just using all of the race right. But he's pushing really hard. And I think that's one thing. You talk about the team managers, the crew chiefs, talking to these drivers. They need to remind him right now this is a 24-hour race. Don't throw it all away. We've got a really strong car, a really strong driver lineup. We need to be around tomorrow. Graham Taylor's car is all over the track. And his driver is incommunicado. And Christoph Bouchou's vision diminishes by the lap. Bouchou needs a wipe. Anybody got a squeegee? The condition was so worst at the end of my uh, double uh, second stint. Uh, I had a problem because uh, one car blew up his engine end of the strike, and uh, he, I, that splash on my windscreen, a lot of uh, oil or li liquid from the, 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 the engine, I don't know exactly, but uh, in the end with my wiper on my windscreen, I couldn't see anything. It was really bad. Visibility and other issues forced Graham Taylor to bring the 55 into the pits eight laps earlier than planned. Sasha Mawson replaces Christoph Bouchou. Each moment of a pit stop is critical. For every second a driver sits on pit road, his opponents travel the length of a football field. For every 20 seconds, they cover more than a mile. This race will end on the track, but it could be won or lost in the pits. At the beginning of the race I was pushing uh, hard and uh, well when it beginning to be dry uh, the car was really over there and I was fighting try to keep my position and uh, I, I oversteer a little bit uh, too much so I spawned but uh, nothing happened I lose one or two positions but uh, I immediately uh, I go back in the same way uh, without stop. On lap 49 Ryan Hunter Ray records the 95's fastest lap yet, and in the next four laps, he takes the car from 12th to 6th position. But after pitting for a tire change on lap 54, something doesn't feel right. We got a problem in the car. Pit now, pit now, pit now, pit now. I saw a car with a center of the rear. Get it up, shake all the wheels, figure out where the problem is. I don't know. You gotta take the body work off. It's really weird. It's like. Was it just a big vibration or did it feel like you had a flat or something? It felt like way, 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 way too rolly. Like in a straight line. Like I, I moved the wheel a little bit, the whole car would move a bunch. Uh, the fourth time it was still back out there. I hate to say it, but you know, you put slicks on in conditions like this, cold slicks on a cold track. I mean, sometimes it is so bad that the driver really does think there's something broken on the car. You can't believe it could be just the tires. When we came in for new uh, slicks, I went out, and there was a there was a feeling like a disconnect in the steering wheel where you turn, the car doesn't react right away. It sits over and then turns, and sits over and then turns. And that was, that worried me. And in this race, 
You're better to get it while you're coming by the pits than go around halfway break and hit the wall. The unscheduled pit stop consumes one minute and 51 seconds. Fifty-five laps into the race, the 55 car is running in 13th position. After losing a lap on the unscheduled pit, the 95 is in 21st. Out of 15 Daytona prototype cars in the field, the 95 is last. It all is cumulative through the course of the 24 hours. So, you know, you could end up at the end of the race and say, well, if we'd have just done this differently, we'd have had, you know, two minutes there or five minutes there or 30 seconds here. In the end, you don't know how it's going to play out. So the key is to stay focused on all the details. 